Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today, in this session, we are going to discuss the famous Lewis theory of unlimited supply of labor. Let's get started. This theory is put forward by a very famous economist, and his name is Sir W. Arthur Lewis. And he says that development can happen in an underdeveloped economy with the surplus labor that is generated in agriculture sector and he has elaborated a discussion on the labor surplus economy and also this discussion that is taken by Lewis is being extended by two other economists Ranis and Fee in 1961. Having said so, we are moving on to the theory given by Lewis. What happened was that in 1954, uh, Lewis had published his famous work, Economic Development with Unlimited Supply of Labor. And this was something that focused on a dual economic character. And what do you mean by dual economy? You have two ways of economy or two types of economy. One would be a rural sector where you have agriculture and the other one would be the urban sector where you have industry that is why you consider it as a dualistic model the theory says that in a dual economic model you will be having an urban sector which would be industrialist sector this sector will be giving a constant wage to the laborers what about the traditional sector traditional agriculture sector is something that has a problem of disguise and employment whenever it comes to disguise and employment in agriculture you have the marginal product of agriculture is equal to zero and these people who work in agriculture sector or family farming would be getting something which is equal to substance wage and for the very same reason, there is practically unlimited supply of labor available with the agriculture sector, which you can use for industrialization. This cannot happen forever, but at least in the initial stage of development, this will be there. But here, what we could see is that, as I have told you, you cannot continue with the unlimited supply of labor, taking from the agriculture sector to industrial sector. At some point, of, at some later point of development, supply of labor would be exhausted in the agriculture sector. Then only with the rise of wage in the industrial sector, you can take more and more laborers from agriculture to industry. So the theory says that you have acute material poverty when it comes to rural sector. And this is something that you can have in underdeveloped economy. And not only in rural sector, but also in urban sector, you can see this underdevelopment. This is seen in least developed countries with overpopulated regions. And if they want to increase their savings, they have to do something. And what is this something? They can use their surplus population, which is available with the agriculture sector for industrial development without hampering the productivity of agriculture sector. Going to the assumption, as I have told you, we do have two sectors, the traditional agriculture sector and the modern industrial sector. Then in the case of agriculture sector, there exists disguise and employment. Even if you remove some laborers from agriculture sector, it will not affect the total product. Here the margin of productivity of labor would be zero. And the development process is something that it can happen with surplus labor. You can take the surplus labor from agriculture and transfer them for increasing the productivity and production in the industrial sector. And this will lead to ultimate growth in the economy. And this transformation process of the economy would be starting with the autonomous expansion in demand in industry. And this would be coming as a result of the changes in the consumer's taste, government purchase, international market, things like that. And whatever it may be, in this case, what we assume is the labor would be homogeneous and also they are unskilled or as we consider they possess same 
capacity to produce you cannot differentiate one person from the other such kind of labor is what you shift from agriculture to industry and the supply of labor from agriculture to industry is something which is unlimited but don't think that the wage that is prevailing in the agriculture is something equal to industry no this is not the situation in agriculture sector you have subsistence wage but when it comes to industrial sector you have a wage which is 30% more 30% more than agriculture wage now there exists unlimited supply of unskilled labor to industry from agriculture and there would be high demand for the product and this will lead to higher profit and this make more and more industrial output both for consumption and for investment and this make more and more labor to be shifted to agriculture sector from uh, more and more labor to be shifted to industrial sector from the agriculture sector and that doesn't mean that the process will continue forever it will be stopping it will be stopping from the agriculture productivity rises when the marginal product of labor in the agriculture sector rises it becomes positive and in the absence of rural urban differences as well in some in uh, cost of living etc this would be occurring when the marginal product of labor in the two sectors would be equal here the marginal product of agriculture would be equal to the marginal product of industry and the theory postulates the existence of a subsistence sector subsistence uh, sector or agriculture sector with surplus labor and the ca capitalist sector or the industrial sector uses capital to produce the output and also we are thinking about a scenario with increase in population so here capitals would be obtaining labor from the agriculture at the existing wage rate and they will be expanding the industrial sector would be expanding with this as i told you the industrial wage would be 30% more than the wage given by the agriculture sector now the capital sector will be employing labor up to a point where the marginal productivity of labor equals the wage rate if you look at the marginal productivity theory this is what we consider the marginal productivity theory says a firm will be employing labor up to a point where the marginal product of labor is equal to wage so what if the wage exceed the marginal productivity if wage is more than marginal productivity you will not you will be reducing the number of laborers this would be reducing the surplus and the surplus is actually the key to the lewis model of development if the marginal productivity is more then you will not let the labor to go to the industrial sector let's have a diagrammatic explanation here you measure quantity of labor along x axis and uh, wage and marginal product along y axis here you can see that os o OS, this is the average product uh, that is there in the subsistence sector, and OW, this is the constant industrial wage. And you could see that uh, in subsistence sector, labor is employed till the point where MP is equal to zero. And this is what we start with. We start with a fixed quantity of capital, and also the demand for labor is something that is shown. by the marginal productivity schedule nq so all the nqs here n n1 q1 nq n2 q2 n3 q3 all this shows the marginal productivity schedule for labor we are assuming a situation of profit maximizing condition for the firms and this would be in such a scenario we can apply a condition where wage is equal to the marginal product of labor and this is what is indicated at this point wage is equal to this is the marginal product activity curve of labor and this is the industrial wage the constant industrial wage at this point both are equal and you are producing this much of output oa units of output 
or OQ1 or uh, a, this much Q1W of output is produced here. And what is in excess of this much OA will earn whatever they can get in subsistence sector. And as per Lewis, development would be there with some reinvestment. And WN part would be reinvestment. Here WN1 would be reinvested. And the reinvestment produces an increase in the amount of fixed capital, which shifts the marginal productivity curve up from N1Q1 to N2Q2. So the new marginal productivity curve would be N2Q2. Again, more labor would be employed. The very same process will happen and again, the marginal productivity curve will shift further to N3Q3, causing more labor to be taken from the agriculture sector to industrial sector. And coming to the wage in subsistence sector, this is something that you can see as rising and wages in the capital sector also would rise. These kind of things would be something that will happen in the first phase of development, but this will be stopped as the supply curve of labor has ceased to be horizontal. But from this point onwards, the supply of labor will turn upwards. So that means this kind of mechanism will be stopping. Going to the criticism of the theory, the theory actually neglects some important problem with respect to pricing of the commodity. Again, Lewis model was considered as justifying an industrialization growth strategy. It was not considering what is happening in the third world economies. And that is one of the important point. Another important point considered to criticize the Lewis model. Again, the model had assumed a surplus labor which was existing in the rural areas where it, uh, whereas it uh, believed that there would be full employment in the urban areas. And this too is not practical and real. Again, labor saving bias of modern technology is also should be considered. This is something we have to consider when it comes to the critical part of the Lewis model of unlimited supply of labor. That is all regarding the theory. Uh, hope you understand. Thank you for watching. You can like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Also, you can download Learn Economy app. The link of the very same would be given in the description box. Also, you can join our free Telegram community to make discussions. For that, also, I'll be providing the link in the description box. That's all for today. I request you to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.